Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. And this is my new 100 inch projector setup, which I've been using over the last week. It is absolutely massive, but it's awesome for both movies and gaming. The Horizon Pro is a 4K HDR projector from XJimmy. It's got Android TV built in, Harman Kardon speakers, a pretty low input lag for gaming, plus it actually looks nice. Now I've had some big TVs over the years including a 77 inch C1 and an 86 inch nanocell, but this has been the ultimate big screen for me and that 4K picture quality is incredible. Well today I want to show you what this projector can actually do. I'm going to show you some movies and I'll also show you some gaming on both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Plus what it's like in different lighting conditions both during the day and at night. Any questions you've got about this projector or my setup please drop those in the comments. And also let me know one movie or game I should definitely play on this. Okay so first impressions of this projector. Well for me projectors have always been pretty boring looking. But it's great to see that the Horizon Pro has a clean and almost minimal design going on. The outer case is actually metal rather than plastic so it gives it a nice premium feel. Now I'm not sure how many of you will move this around once you've set it up, but if you did need to move it, it is less than 3 kilograms. As I mentioned, the design of this is pretty minimal, with only a few buttons on the top including the power button and the media controls. Now as this projector has Harman Kardon speakers, you can see there's a little label on the side here as well. Around the back it comes with pretty much everything that we need, including two HDMI ports. Now these HDMI ports are 2.0, not 2.1, but I will explain later why we don't really need 2.1 on this. There's also two USB ports, a headphone out, an optical port and an Ethernet port if you're not using Wi-Fi. On the bottom there's some rubber feet and there's a hole in which you can actually mount it on a tripod or a bracket if you'd like. Okay so before I get this set up let me quickly show you the screen that I'm using. So if you followed me for a while you'll know this isn't actually my first projector. The last time that I used one I didn't have a screen and I just pointed it straight at the wall. It worked fine but this time I thought I wanted to do it properly so I've actually gone for a fixed frame screen. I bought this one off Amazon and it cost me £120, or about $160, which isn't bad for the quality that you're getting. It's got a full metal frame which clips together, and then the screen itself, well that stretches and clips onto the back, giving it an almost perfect finish. It can then be wall mounted using four screws, although for now I've actually attached it to my TV bracket instead. And then around the front of the frame, it's actually got a nice velvet texture to it, and it definitely has a nice quality feel. I could have gone for a roller screen instead and it would have been easier to store away and probably easier to use, but I really like the look of this screen. Okay, so getting it set up is really easy. I've actually attached mine to a tripod and that means I can adjust the height and the tilt or move it around. But you could use it on a shelf or a table, plus it can be front, rear or ceiling mounted. Now the first time that you set it up or any time that you need to move it, you can actually use the auto keystone which is actually incredible. So there's no need to mess around in the settings to try and adjust the projector to match your screen. Just tap a button and it does it all for you and within a matter of seconds it's ready to go. And once it is set up it will take less than 6 seconds to boot up each time, almost as quick as a TV. One thing to note is the distance you need to place the projector from your screen. I've put these measurements on screen now to give you an idea but this depends on the size you wish to achieve. But this projector does go up to 300 inches. Now my projector is set at 10 feet from the screen and I've got it set to 100 inches. This is exactly what I wanted to go for in my setup and I think it works pretty well. But there's also a digital zoom though, so if you wanted to make it larger or smaller you can do that within the projector settings. Okay, let's talk about the picture quality of this projector which has genuinely blown me away. The clarity, vibrance and overall picture quality is really impressive. It's no surprise though as it is a 4K projector with over 8 million pixels and it supports HDR10. So any movies or gaming that I've shown looks great. I've watched a few different movies on this over the last week on Disney and Prime, and whether it's been live action or animated, it all looks decent. A combination of the projector, the screen, the movie and the lighting has given me a real home cinema experience. An issue that I expected to find with this which I haven't is the colours or contrast being washed out. But it has been perfect, it means I've been able to watch darker films on it without really worrying about the image being unwatchable. Sure, the brighter scenes and the brighter movies look far nicer, but the dark scenes look absolutely fine. Now projectors generally speaking aren't as bright as a TV, you'd normally need to have the lights off or dim to see anything at all. But this is the brightest projector that I've ever used, I've been able to watch this during the day and have my lights on at night. In fact I've actually got the brightness of this projector set to just 50% and that's more than enough. It's actually rated at 2200 lumens which is 30% brighter than the competition and that really shows. Now obviously the best viewing experience is definitely watching this at night with the lights dimmed, the same as you would expect at the cinema. 
But here's an example where I'm actually shining the brightest light that I own, a softbox, and you can still see the picture. Now this is an extreme case and obviously not something you would typically do, but I wanted to show you how the screen can actually cope with it. You could watch this during the day, but it's not going to be ideal for the ultimate picture experience. The bulb on this actually has a lifespan of 25,000 hours. That means if you watched it for eight hours every single day, it would last you more than eight and a half years. So there's no worries about the bulb needing replacing. Overall though, the picture quality has really surprised me. For a screen measuring 100 inches, it just looks perfect. And for the price, this is well worth the money. In terms of the dashboard and the UI, well the Horizon Pro comes with the Android TV operating system. This means it supports almost all of the apps you'd expect to see in the Google Store. Things like Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime, YouTube and loads more. Even games on here, although I've not downloaded any of these. There's only one app that doesn't work, even though you can download and sign into it, and that's Netflix. Now this might be something that is supported in the future, who knows, but it's worth mentioning as right now it does not work. But if you want to watch Netflix on it like I do, you could use Chromecast or you can plug another device in. Something like an Apple TV, an Xbox or a PlayStation 5, anything else that supports Netflix. But if you don't need Netflix, well you can use this projector as it is with nothing else plugged in. The App Store and the native apps are awesome. Plus as it's got that 32 gigabytes of internal memory, there's plenty of space to download and store your apps. Now I've got to show you this and that's the Auto Keystone and the Auto Focus which is an absolute game changer on this projector. So if you go into the Keystone settings, it will actually automatically adjust the image to the best possible size. You can obviously manually override this if you think it's wrong, but so far for me it has been 100% perfect. On top of this, if you tap the focus button on the remote, it will put an image on screen and it will then sort the focus out for you. It's always been pin sharp once it's properly focused. But this next part is awesome. It's actually got an intelligent obstacle avoidance sensor. So if you shine the projector on the wall and someone or something is in the way, it will actually adjust the screen around it. So here, for example, I've deliberately stood in front of the projector and as it tries to calibrate, it actually moves the entire image to the side. This would work if there was a lamp or a shelving or a door in the way or anything else that isn't flat enough for the image. And if you've ever had a projector before, you'll know how convenient this is that it auto keystones and auto focuses for you. There's no need to spend hours trying to fiddle with the feet underneath the projector to try and balance it for the screen. Right, next up is gaming on the Horizon Pro. Now, not many will use this projector for gaming, but I do and it's been awesome. It's a totally different view and experience, but it's not for everyone. I've been using it with both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and there's only been one single noticeable issue. I'll get straight to the point, it's got a delay of 35 milliseconds while in game mode. Now by comparison, my TV is 5.3 milliseconds and my monitor is 4 milliseconds. So it's a lot slower than those but it's still very very good for a projector and probably not much different to a non-gaming focused TV or monitor. This means for games that don't require lightning fast reflections, there's no problem at all. I've been playing loads of different games to test out over the last week and here's what I found. Car games like Forza or Gran Turismo look and play incredibly well as long as you have game mode enabled. Without game mode on, games are just unplayable. I'm talking what feels like a two second delay, I was fishtailing all over the place. Driving around in Forza is awesome though, the colours, the contrast are perfect, even the motion handling is really good. There's no screen tearing and no issues with the picture. And since Forza launched a couple of weeks ago, I've been addicted to this game. I've put so many hours in already. But if you want to add me over on Xbox, my game attack is the same as YouTube, it's just spawn point. Now as this isn't HDMI 2.1, it's only HDMI 2.0, there's no 4K 120Hz support. But that's fine for a projector, you don't really need it. And the 4K 60 it supports runs very, very smoothly. I did actually play one game of Call of Duty Vanguard, and that was the first and the last game that I played on this projector. At 35 milliseconds, it's just unplayable for me. But if that's the only downside to this projector, that you can't play a competitive FPS game, I guess that's not a bad downside. But jumping back into other games like Spider-Man or Astro's Playroom on the PS5 looks incredible. I think this is probably the nicest looking game that I've played on here in terms of colours and brightness. My two children have loved playing this on the big screen, it's definitely going to make my 77 inch TV look a little bit too small. But when it comes to gaming on a projector, I would say as long as you don't need lightning fast reactions like in an FPS game like Call of Duty, everything else will run absolutely fine. So whether that's your racing games or Spider-Man or platform games, they will look incredible and it will definitely give you a whole different gaming experience. So the chances are, if you're using a projector at home, you've probably got a soundbar or an AVR with some speakers. But with this projector, you don't need to as the projector actually has some Harman Kardon speakers built in. It also supports DTS HD audio and it sounds great. Movies and gaming have sounded awesome. Seriously, the sound is as good as a dedicated soundbar. Just take a listen to this. Tell 
Now what's great about having internal speakers is if you do decide to use this outside or away from home, you don't need a soundbar or a Bluetooth speaker with it. And in terms of the fan noise, it is really quiet. When there's no sound on it in the room at all, you can obviously hear it very slightly, but as soon as the movie or the game sound is on, you cannot hear it at all. And in case you're wondering what's inside the box, let's take a quick look. So it comes with a projector, then underneath that it comes with a manual, which I can safely say I did not read. You've got the power brick, a power cable, and the Bluetooth remote. And that's it. And the remote is actually pretty simple looking. It does everything that we need it to do. You've got the power button on the top, then the settings button and a Google Assistant button. The circular button in the middle, that's your navigation, and in the center is your OK button. Underneath is the back, the home, and the volume buttons. And the last one is the autofocus button, which is actually quite convenient, as it means you don't need to go into the settings to change the focus. Around the back, there's this little button that pops the battery tray out, which takes two AAA batteries. Okay, let's talk about the cost of this projector. What do you think it's worth? We're talking about a 4K HDR projector, probably one of the brightest and best pictures available right now. Plus, it's got those Harman Kardon speakers built in. Okay, so the RRP for this projector is £1,500 or $1,700, which considering what this can do, I actually think it's not a bad price at all. There's also the cheaper non-pro model, and that offers the same experience, but it's 1080p instead of 4K. But keep an eye out on the sales, because we're very close to Black Friday, and if this reduces in price any more, it would be an instant bargain. I've also dropped a link in the description if you wanted to check it out. So as always, the ultimate question is, is it worth it? Is it something that I would recommend buying? Well first the overall cons, there's no HDMI 2.1 support but unless you're gaming at 4K 120, you don't really need this on a projector yet. The lack of Netflix support is a real shame but plugging in a console or an Apple TV will sort that. Then finally the 35 millisecond response time, don't expect to be playing Call of Duty or any FPS games online as you will really struggle, but the pros far outweigh the cons. It's got incredible 4K performance, everything is sharp and the image is crystal clear. It's also incredibly bright to the point that you don't need to watch it in a blackout room. You can watch this with the lights on. It also looks nice. It's one of the most aesthetically pleasing projectors that's out there. I've got no problem having this on show and it could easily sit on the shelf pretty much anywhere. Then there's the awesome keystone and the autofocus. There's no time wasting trying to get the perfect picture. Overall, I'm very happy with the Horizon Pro and I think I'll struggle to find another one better than this, especially for the price. So if you're wanting a true 4K home cinema experience, whether it's for movies or gaming, this is the one. Well, you've just made it to the end of today's video, so thank you for watching. If you've got any questions about this projector, please let me know below. And here's another video you might be interested in watching next. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on so you don't miss my next upload. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.